Hello, Dr. Lieberman. I'm uh, Chris Peterson. My wife and I live up here in the mountains of northern New Mexico in a little ski town. I am a uh, designer builder of custom homes, uh, remodels up here in the mountains. Uh, we also have a custom cabinet shop. I'm also a ski instructor. Um, so uh, in April, I had shoulder surgery. Uh, about a month later, I started um, feeling pain in my left hip. I thought, oh my, now my hip's going out. Um, but I figured it was probably just some misalignment. Uh, and I started doing some Egoscu for realignment. It kept getting worse until it started going down the side of my thigh. And then I uh, realized it was sciatica. So I started doing a little more Egoscu for sciatica. It got worse. I went in and saw my regular doctor uh, who got me. Uh, we changed up my physical therapy for my shoulder to go to sciatica. And I uh, got an appointment with a chiropractor and started seeing a chiropractor. Um, the chiropractor suggested that I get an MRI. I got uh, my shoulder surgeon to get me a referral for an MRI uh, of my lower back, which finally happened in July. Um, it was still continuing to get get worse, um, not being able to stand for any length of time, not being able to walk any distance, um, sitting reasonably okay, uh, lying down not so great, um, tingling and raw skin on the inside of my left leg down by my knee, uh, gradually stretching to, to feeling pain in my uh, upper thigh uh, near my groin, uh, tingling going down toward my ankle. Um, like I say, you know, standing for more than two minutes and I've got to start trying to change things up to get it to release. The MRI uh, report shows four bulging discs and one herniated disc. Um, with three of those uh, with radicalopathy. Hopefully I pronounced that correctly. Uh, got an appointment finally with a spine specialist in Santa Fe. That didn't happen until here just the 1st of September. Uh, they uh, wanted to give me a couple of steroid shots, but they're unable to schedule them for two months trying to get this solved uh, sooner rather than later. Um, I got an appointment with a neurosurgeon up in Denver. I uh, went up to see him just this past week. Uh, and he wants to, um, to fuse my spine. Um, and uh, that's really, really, really scary. Um, I was able to get him to get a referral for uh, some steroid shots that will hopefully happen sooner than than the other appointment I have a couple of months from now. Um, I can use uh, any uh, thoughts, advice uh, that you might be able to give me. Um, I would really appreciate your help. Thank you. What's the point of being a mountain man if you can't enjoy the mountains? <laughs> yeah, now I'm worried about my ski season. Yeah, well, um, I'm really glad to talk to you today because you've had some really crappy medical care. Um, for a variety of reasons, my guess is it's really hard when you're remote. Herniated discs with sciatica can be tricky to manage under any circumstances. But if you then take that herniated disc with sciatica and put that person in a rural setting, it, it gets a lot weirder 
and a lot more complicated. But um, the bottom line is what we need to do today. I need to get a little more information from you. We need to go over your films and then we need to get back to best practice. We need to get back to what actually is the way this is normally treated and the way the medical evidence and the science points. Does that sound good? That sounds awesome. All right, let's start with, I got to ask you a few questions. Uh, I just want to make sure I understand this right. The shoulder surgery and the sciatica began in April of 2023, and it's on the left side and it goes down the left. What I need to know is, does it does it cross over toward the inner part of the knee or does it go below the knee and go to the inner ankle or where does it go? So I have multiple spots. Um, so my knee uh, itself remains basically numb all the time. Uh, the Is it ends, the inner part of the knee or the outer part or the whole thing? The, the front of the knee stays numb. Okay. The, the inside of the knee and the lower thigh feel like I have road rash all the time, like raw skin. Got it. The uh, quick, quick question. What about the bump on the inner ankle? Is that numb or is it just more the inner knee or more the knee? More the knee. Okay. And I assume you're weak in your quad and you sometimes feel like you're going to fall because your left knee is going to give out on you. Is that true? Not it's that it's really painful not it's just the pain it, yeah not yeah. that it's weak i actually okay. i actually do uh my stationary bike uh and and as long as i'm in a bent over like in a a racing type position i'm okay yeah it yeah. makes sense and it so does. i i work hard at trying to keep my legs strong so i don't really feel like it's weak as much as it's a stabbing pain that that doesn't allow me to stand on it yeah and the the injections that you had in denver were uh, epidural injection at l34 and l45 on the left not medial branch block correct correct yeah okay okay yeah um you ready to so, look at that I got you. I got you, buddy. <laughs> I, had, I understand. So I, I need to add to that uh, that I do. Um, so the the pain comes comes lower left back down through my glute down the lower left side of my leg. Mm -hmm. uh, it it can shoot across like you're saying over the top of the knee in that direction. It can also shoot across the upper part of my thigh all the way to the inside of my groin on the inside. Right. Yes, got you. Makes sense, makes sense. All right, um, yeah, I, I know, I understand. Um, and uh, I just wanna, I wanna show you your MRI and then we can kind of catch each other up on where we're at. And then we can look at what to do, what the best practice is to do about it. Sounds great. You ready? This is a, a cut that goes through you straight down the middle. So this is your back and then this is going up toward your head and this is going down toward your bum. And when we look at you from kind of 10,000 feet, from the from, you're already at 9,000 feet. So if we went another <laughs> another thousand feet, really really nice looking spine in the shape of the spine and the curvature of the lumbar spine coming into the sacrum is perfect. We see a really nice spinal canal going up and down, except for right here. If you just follow, this is your spinal cord and this is the white is the fluid around it. And then the spinal cord ends and these filaments are the nerve roots. And as we're going down, perfect, perfect, little bulging something, something here. But then right here, you know, most of the spinal canal is being taken up by this thing. And this thing is a herniated disc. This is the L3 
and the L4 bones and the disc in between. And all this stuff right here is supposed to be back there. It got squeezed out or herniated out through a hole in the disc. And that is called a herniated disc. Your herniated disc happens in the context of something else called spinal stenosis. So this is the perpendicular view of your spine. And in this view, we've got your normal spinal canal. These dots are your nerve roots. They're not dots, they're spaghettis. But because, like if you held a pack of spaghetti on end, those ends would all look like dots. That's what's going on here. This is a section through the end of your uh, through your body. And so your your spaghettis look like dots. But as we go down, keep an eye on this. We're looking good. We're looking good. And then here. We're now our spaghettis are smushed. This whole side is now triangular instead of circular that's the spinal stenosis or narrowing but even worse there's a big old herniated disc here this is your l34 and is putting pressure on your nerve root so that's your problem um, the reason that's so important the nerve root that runs right here through this hole is the l3 nerve root and the l3 nerve root is the one that goes down your like the sensory area for it is down your butt, crosses your knee toward your inner thigh, all the way up to the groin. The muscles that it innervates are the quad muscles. So when you have L3 nerve root problems, most people who aren't like phenomenally in phenomenal shape from skiing and uh, their Peloton would feel weakness in that quad, but you've been overcoming it. But uh, mountain man, that's very good. But the numbness you can't overcome through exercise. And so you're feeling that numbness. So a herniated disc with sciatica has three basic um, options for treatment. And um, the you've had two out of the three. The first one is to wait it out because 90 plus percent of these are going to get better on their own over a period of six to 12 weeks but you went from April to we're now a day or two shy of October. So you went from four, you've, you've gone almost six months. You're way more than 12 weeks and you're still having pain. So this is not necessarily going to just get better on its own. It might, if we waited years, we might get better, but you've gone so long and you have so much numbness. I'd really be afraid to not treat this. The, other two treatments, microdiscectomy surgery or epidural injection, we usually say it depends on how you're feeling and what you're doing. If you have functionally limiting numbness or weakness, then you should have a microdiscectomy surgery. If you have unbearable pain, then you should have epidural injection. You had epidural injection, but it, frankly, it was the wrong treatment for six months out given the severity of your numbness. So I'm not surprised it didn't work. There was almost no chance that that was going to do anything, but uh, better, you know, better safe than sorry, I guess. You had it. You know now it's not an option because it didn't work. And so further epidural injections would be rubbing salt in the wound of having something that probably was never going to work in the first place. So you are a candidate for microdiscectomy surgery. You are not in any parallel universe a candidate for multi-level fusion. I don't know what that guy was 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 doing. The um, that's crazy. You do not need a fusion. That's nothing. You do need surgery, but the surgery you need is microdiscectomy surgery. I should say more accurately, it's decompression surgery. And the reason I say that is, the reason this disc is causing so much trouble for you is you were already narrow there. Instead of this spinal canal, you had this spinal canal. And so you had stenosis to begin with. And so there's no point in taking out the herniated disc and then letting the stenosis progress over the years. You got many, many, many years to deal with this back. So it would make sense just to do the laminectomy now. And in the laminectomy, open up the spinal canal, take out that herniated disc and let it heal. 
and that would be the appropriate operation for you. An easy surgery, it takes about an hour. It can be done these days through a minimally invasive approach, which means instead of filleting your back open, they just put a tubular retractor in there and drill off the bone. Some doctors would use, some neurosurgeons or orthopedic spine surgeons would use an endoscope to visualize that. That's fine. More, more often they would do it through a microscope. That's better. But what you need is a micro laminectomy at L3-4 on the left side. They'll actually reach under and do both sides. And these days, the kind of surgeons who do that are in so much demand and from people all over the place that they'll usually do your first visit through a Zoom meeting where they can look at your uh, MRI, talk to you, go over your symptoms and your history just like you and I did. And then the first time you meet them, you can go see them and then have the surgery. That's the best way to do it in a rural environment. You're very fit, but uh, your surgeon will have a protocol for making sure your heart and your lungs and your kidneys and all your organs are medically fit to undergo anesthesia and surgery. So you'll go through that whole process, but there's no reason why that can't be done over the next week or so, and this can't get knocked out within a week. Absolutely no reason why you don't go back to skiing, uh, construction. Your life is well within reach of your uh, medical condition, but it does need to be treated, and the sooner the better. Cool. Now to find out who can do that. Um, the pretty short list. I, I mean, pretty pretty easy to find. There's people <clears throat> in Denver. I'm here in Phoenix. We can hook you up with. Uh, there's great doctors here in Phoenix who do this kind of work. Um, we can hook you up with one of them. Uh, Phoebe can. We can do. If you would prefer, if there's another city that's close by, we love we love doing research. We would love to do the research and find a good doctor up there to connect you with. Um, but it's up to up to you. Yeah. Well, uh, I'm I'm willing to go considerable distance in order to be able to. Uh, I mean, we already have to. I mean, you, you know, have to go, yeah. So, yeah. you might you might as well just go some go go to the best doctor uh, in yeah. in the region. And there's there's a lot of people who can get it done. I'll have Phoebe get in touch with you, and we'll we'll help you find a good person. And if you're willing, I'd love to have you come back on after the surgery and see how you're doing. I would love to do that. All right. Oh.